Hi, this is No Squared, and I would like to present to you Grid World 2. Grid World 2 is meant to be a replacement slash enhancement towards the original AP Grid World case study. I wrote it because there were several pieces of code inside the original Grid World that didn't appeal to me in terms of good code, in terms of good design, and I didn't really like that the original Grid World is step based instead of real time. You cannot really see results in real time. You have to make a step and then you have to kind of just assume what happened in that step. And that's why I set out to write this this Grid World 2. So far it's been about a month and it's shaping out shaping up quite well. Now let's dive into it with some code. Let's create a new runner, just like in the original Grid World. Create a class, let's call it demo runner. Let's inherit or extend. Excuse my uh, excuse my C++ terminology here. <laughs> and let's create a demo runner. Let's call run on it. And that gives us the application. We get the frame rate, the grid, and the log. We could pan the world, pan the camera actually, using the right mouse button. We can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. We could click on the grid and say don't draw grid, but that's not very useful because we don't have anything on the grid yet. And we could say file exit. Note that this grid is unbounded right now. It's infinite. You could zoom on forever pretty much. Well, not even zoom, um, I mean pan on forever. So our first step, let's create a bounded world. Now, in the original grid world, you would create a new grid. However, considering both the world and the grid manage the object, in grid world 2, the world is the grid, and the grid is the world. So, let's create, let's, uh, what is it? Protected void create world. And we'll do world equals new bounded world new grid point this is the minimum grid point let's say 0 0 and the maximum grid point let's say 10 10 this is inclusive on both minimum and maximum therefore you'll have 11 you have a width and height of 11 not 10 so let's import these classes let's import gw2 that grid point and import gw2 that bounded world and run and now we have an 11 by 11 bounded grid we can't click on the outside we can't click on the inside though let's take a look at bounded world as you can see it simply extends world stores the min and the max overrides the get min and the get max which by default returns no for the unbounded world and it simply overrides the is grid position valid. If the super grid position isn't valid, then we return false. And as long as the point is within our bounds, then we return true. Now back to the demo. Let's say we want to create a bug. Let's override protected void prepare. Prepare is called right before the game loop runs, but after we create the world. So, we could simply say super.prepare, just in case the super class needs to prepare something. And we create a new bug. Let's pass it the uh, bug.png image. If you create a bug, the base bug class, then you need an image. Now, the other thing is, in Grid World 2, rendering and um, logic are coupled. Now, in the real world, technically you don't want to couple rend uh, the logic and the rendering and essentially you would use something like a component based design where you would have a render component and a logic component however for simplicity we simply use an inheritance based model here and our actor both renders and updates now in the original grid world the rendering is it's given to separate helper classes which are achieved via reflection which is actually not a very good design at all 
it's completely transparent to the user therefore the user will have lots of trouble making their own lots of trouble making their own rendering algorithms for their actors they have to extend some specifically named class and so on but anyways that was way off topic let's do bug let's do world.add bug and let's import this class run and now we have a bug at zero zero we could click on it and call methods let's see if it's alive return value true alright let's see what's its position vec2 0 0.5 0 0.5 and that's true because its center is at 0 0.5 0 0.5 let's call type return value bug um, get size 1.0 Let's call set size. This is our par parameter dialog. It allows us to call functions using any type of parameter. So this is a flow parameter. So let's set size to 0 0.5. And now the bug is small. Let's call kill. The bug splattered. And then the splatter disappears. Something we could do now is we could click on the bug and say follow. Now we can't pan the camera because it follows the bug. However, since the bug is primitive, then there's nothing there's nothing interesting here. So let's make it a box bug. We'll just import box bug from custom. Alright, now we have a moving bug, which is a box bug. Let's click on it and say follow. And now the world is automatically panned such that the camera matches up the, with the bug. Let's extend bug runner and make a new bug, bug.png, and import bug runner. And what bug runner lets us do is click control on the bug as well as follow. Now we could control the bug ourselves using the arrow keys rotate and move. Now, say we want to create a bug. How do we create bugs using a menu? Well, we have to override a method called public void get spawnable actor. By default, this method returns an empty array list. Oh, actually, it's not void. It's array list of string. By default, this method returns an empty array list. And if the return array list is empty, then we don't have a create menu. However, let's say we allow this runner to spawn gw2.bug. That means that now we have a create menu. We could click on the grid position, create gw2.bug, or gw2.bug that takes a string. Once again, let's create a bug using the bug.png method, uh, I meant image, and here we have that bug. Now we can move this bug. Whoops. We can move this bug, our bug, if we click on control. And it can't collide. It collides and it can't move through this bug here. Now we could click on this bug and say follow that one. And then stop controlling bug, control that bug. And now we control this bug instead. Let's stop controlling and stop following. Let's move this one closer to that one, two units away. Then stop following, stop controlling. Let's call let's call get neighbors. Get neighbors in a radius of two. And it returns this bug here. Now bug doesn't have a two string method. So basically, it just uses the object method, but that's good enough. We know that the method is working. Let's say we want to set the bug at 0, 0. We would call set grid position. But grid point is a non trivial type. Therefore, the parameter dialog breaks it down recursively into all of its possible constructors. We have a constructor that takes a vector 2 and a constructor that takes 2 ints. The constructor that takes a vector 2 also breaks down that vector 2. 
So we have a vector 2 constructor that takes two floats. Let's set it to the position 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Now if we think about it, this vector as a 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 and the corresponding grid point would be just 0, 0 because it's rounded down. We close it and our bug is immediately at 0, 0. This just about concludes the demonstration. Please stay tuned for further videos of further functionality. Thanks for watching this video.